Hi, I'm Ray Grahalva. And I'm Anne-Marie Grahalva. And this is The, the Joy, Joy of the, the Faith. Faith. Today we're going to cover the question, how do you find peace? So if you're watching out there, you might be going through some sort of difficulty, whether heartbreak or work stress or stress exams, whatever it may be, we're here to share some of our struggles <laughs> and ensure you that you're going to make it through this. So we're going to cover the four situations, heartbreak, as I said before, day-to-day -day life, you know how to find peace in the day-to-day, -day, work stress, mm -hmm. and then also stress with exams, and then one final surprise. So Definitely. I'm going to throw it over to my yeah. awesome wife, and she's going to talk about heartbreak. So here's a really interesting example of heartbreak that I experienced. So I've been in a two-year relationship, and I, unfortunately, I was broken up with, and I didn't want the relationship to end, and so it was clear that my boyfriend had wanted it just to be over and so basically when it ended he would call me every week or two weeks just to check in and see how I was doing just as like a courtesy but to me on my side I was looking forward to that phone call like every week every other week whenever it was going to be and then when I got the phone call I was so excited you know with the possibility of us getting back together and then we'd end and then it would just blah again and go over it. It's the cycle and the cycle. And then my brother John called me one time and just, Amory, how are you doing? How are you doing with the breakup? And I told him what had been happening. And he's just, but Amory, are you are you at peace? Do you have peace in this? And I was like, well, if I if I was really honest with myself, I I wasn't because I I was hoping for something more every single time he'd call me. Um, and he said like, where there is where there is not peace, there is not God. And when I realized that, I I knew it had to end. I had to just let my um, ex-boyfriend at the time know like um, thank you for these phone calls but they need to end if, if we're never gonna come back together so and let me tell you what I found a lot of peace after that so thank you to my brother John on that one and I'm happy for that too because that's why I'm here I know it's so <laughs> great so you just trust in God's plan <laughs> so it really is that detachment that allowed you to have peace with it Absolutely. knowing that like yeah it was so outside. hard but I mean look it paid off like when you just like trust in his greater plan and put it into his hands our Lord's hands I mean, how can you not have peace? Mm -hmm. So and that's really helped, uh, I know, with a few people that have broken up. Amber sharing that story with her. And, you mm -hmm. know, having those longer relationships, you know, if you're watching, they're always so tough to, to break, you know, break off from. But knowing there's a greater plan, knowing that everything, as I've said in previously, yeah. everything that's going to happen is already known, you know, mm -hmm. by God, having that faith and trust in him. Um, and then Amber is going to continue on with our next one, the day-to-day -day life. Day-to-day -day life. All right. So this is the, the concept of having patience with others. So let's. I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you're in the car and you're picking up your brother or sister from practice or your parent and you're picking up your son or your daughter from practice. Anyway, like let's say the practice time goes longer than expected. and Which never happens. <laughs> never, you know, of course. And it's just easy. I think it's human nature to be on your own agenda very often. And when you get thrown off and let's say they're 10, 20, 30 minutes or more um, delayed it's easy for us to grow angry and then blame it on that person well no take accountability of your own time and have a book with you or you know have people to call to catch up with um, mm -hmm. and then you'll I, think just, that's, yeah. I think that's awesome that you brought that up because uh, one of the examples that I had was my brother John I would always pick him up from college and we drive back mm -hmm. home and I remember the first semester of his freshman year right. I would wait and, and he would always be late and mm -hmm. I would always be like, John, why are you late? <laughs> and it just starts it off on a bad note. Yeah. You know, we never had a good ride home. There were times like we got mm -hmm. home and we weren't even talking to each other. We were just yeah. so mad, just yelling at each other. You and know? How sad is that? Like those are precious moments. I know. But it, when I had that ability to detach, mm -hmm. I guess, and say, all right, I'm going to be patient with him and I'm going to, you know, offer it up, I guess you could right. say, yeah, and, and just give him that time and, and let him do it. And later on, talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually later on talked about it. I said, John, you realize how you being late to stuff puts stress on other people. And he's like, wow, I never would have realized that. Yeah. But if I would have brought it up in the moment, how different it would have been because right. people's defenses flare. So it's having that patience with others and really mm -hmm. um, giving them the benefit of the doubt. Absolutely. Um, San Alfonso Liguori says, the more a person loves God, the more reason he has to hope in him. The hope produces in the saints an unutterable peace, which they per persevere even in adversity. Because as they love God and know how beautiful he is to those who love him, they place all their confidence and find all their repose in him alone. Mm. And I just think that's so beautiful. Yeah. Like, it's just always that trusting thing. Um, so I'm going to move on to the third one, 
which is work stress. So as we all know, work is difficult, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And stress can pile up and, and, and it gets more difficult and, and life is always tough. But I, I read a really awesome leadership book. It's called Leadership and Self-Deception. And I'll flash an image right here. Mm-hmm. And it talked about treating the other person like a person, not an object, not immediately getting mad at them. Oh, this person always does this. This person stinks. Mm-hmm. Treating them as a person, having that patience to deal with, not to deal with them, that's actually one of the words that say don't use to yeah. deal. You know, to, I guess, love them, you know, and that, that actually came up. And what it really does is it allows you to see them as a person and see, hey, maybe they ran late to this meeting. Maybe they're stressed to this and this and this. Because you don't know what's going on with coworkers. And they don't know what's going on with you. So having that second, you know, everyone, when everyone gets mad, you know, when people get mad, it's mm-hmm. like wait 10 seconds and then, and then do your action. This detachment allows that. That leads to peace. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the executives for Lockheed Martin, her name's Lorraine Martin. She's an executive vice president. She, uh, at a conference I was at, she said, always assume the goodwill of your, in your coworker. Always assume that they have your will in mind. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's so great because so many times it's like, oh, that person hates me. You know, all this drama back and Mm -hmm. forth, back and forth. But if we took that second and said, hmm, maybe they're doing this like in spite of me. Mm -hmm. But if I take that second and say, all right, I'm going to give them the benefit of that on this one. Right. They're going to see, wow, that person really cares. They're not just out to get me. They're not just, you know, interested in their career. Mm-hmm. They're actually interested in who I am. And uh, I just think that's okay. so beautiful and has really um, allowed me to, to grow. Um, and lastly, smile. Even if, mm-hmm. even if you don't want to smile. I mean, Anne-Marie does Mary Kay. And Mary Kay always says, you know, I don't feel like a million bucks every day. I, don't, I just want to mm-hmm. wake up with a smile. Mm-hmm. But it's that effort. Absolutely. Those little efforts make such a yeah. difference. And people always remember that. Yeah. People remember, yeah. gosh, everything has gone wrong. It mm-hmm. looks like the company's going to fold and that person had peace. Absolutely. It's cool. We mentioned Mary Kay. She, she basically told her people that um, when you look at people, look at, look at them as if they have a sign on the, around their neck and it says, make me feel important. And like, how like great that. is it to like come across with positive attitude, you know, come across with a smile. Like it is so contagious. A smile is... It's worth a million, you know, yeah, words. words. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And then finally, <laughs> exams. For all you guys out there in college, uh, you know, I, I'm actually doing uh, my graduate work now. So I, I guess I'm in college. But Exciting. we all get stressed for these exams. You know, it's always mm-hmm. so tough. And I used to really have really bad anxiety with them. And I wasn't able to do well. I was like, you know, I couldn't sleep because I had to, you know, study. And at one point, you know, as I was growing in faith, I realized, wow, if I've done everything that I can, I'm at peace. Because no matter... What I did, mm-hmm. you know, taking into account everything that I did, I couldn't have done any yeah. more to do well. And that's that's just the piece that comes from knowing that you've done enough. Right. Um, also, St. Joseph Cupertino, he's the man. Uh, real quick story about him. He was <laughs> a saint, one of the dumbest saints probably ever. And uh, back mm-hmm. then, to become a priest, you had to know a lot of scripture, and they would say a verse, and you had to recite it. Um, basically, the bishop came amazing. in and wanted him to be a priest because he was sleeping with the lambs. And the bishop was like, wow, I love like that. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. So he was like, you got to make him a priest. And they're like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> he loved animals. And his favorite verse was, you know, the good shepherd is the one that leaves the 99 to find the one. Mm-hmm. Sure enough, at his exam, they asked him that question. So he's the patron saint of tests because mm-hmm. you pray that what you're studying is what is on the exam. So, so great. St. Joseph for the man. Um, <laughs> finally, I wanted to note, uh, you know, To have peace, you have to be open to things. You know, Mm -hmm. if you're automatically closed to everything and you don't want to do anything, you're never really going to have peace because opportunities might come up and you might Mm -hmm. miss them. And then you say, oh man, I totally should have done that. I totally should have done this. And today's a great example. I was going to do another talk today and I went to Mass this morning and this beautiful reading came out. It's Matthew 10 uh, verses 9 through 13. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts. No sack for the journey or a second tunic or sandals or walking stick. The laborer deserves his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, look for a person worthy in it and stay there until you leave. As you enter a house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If not, let your peace return to you. And man, when I when I realized, or when mm-hmm. I heard that, let your peace return to you, I thought, wow, how amazing is that? that the peace is within us. You know, so many times, yeah. especially nowadays, we try to have conversations, we try to win people over. There's mm-hmm. only two results. Either you win them over and you convince them, or you don't. Yeah. But if you don't, it's not worth it to get all mad and upset about it. It's important mm-hmm. to let that peace return to you and say, all right, I've done yeah. all I can. So many people allow words to destroy their day. I mean, if they're negative, of course. Mm-hmm. Or they could build you up. But like, but why let someone take over um, when you can find peace in the Lord? <laughs> mm-hmm. So I hope you enjoyed that video. 
my wife and I <laughs> are a great feast because we have patience with each other and yep. try to love Growing each other every as day. much as possible. <laughs> All right. God love you.